Yeah, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters. When you talk about creating your own world today, uh, on the notion that you can be happy on your lifelong journey, that's no small thing. And for this, we're going to talk to Charles Tuftoy. He's retired Army, retired academic. And uh, let's see what else we got. Um, and, and a little uh, bit in the corporate world. And he spent some time in the corporate. Welcome to the show, Charles. Nice to have you back. Yeah, thanks, uh, Jay. I was looking forward to it. Always good to see you. Well, you you written books, um, and um, now now you're working on something called Create Your Own World, and I want to know more about that because you know you 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 do that because many things in the world cause you and us to become depressed, disappointed, and stressed, and some of these are misinformation, disinformation problems with cybersecurity, gun control, political divisiveness. We talk about that all the time. Climate change, we worry about that all the time. And racism, among other things. So tell me, Charles, you know, do these things affect you? Are they high priority? Are you depressed? I'm not depressed because I created my own world, Jay, which is what I'm going to explain today. And uh, basically, I got this idea from people. So I ran uh, discussion groups, and I've given a couple of talks on it, uh, where, you know, it's a good crowd, and, and I make it sort of a, rather than a presentation type of thing that we're used to, I draw them into it. In other words, what depresses you? And I, I copy all that down, and I have a list of things from, from those groups. Here's the big picture, and you, you hit on it already. The world is unstable and complex. That's a given. Uh, that bothers people, especially in the unstable arena, where we do face things that you brought up. And here are some of the things that the people have been bringing up. Oh, by the way, the reason I tackle this is I noticed, like you said, people are anxious, uh, depressed, and that leads to stress. Um, they can't sleep at night and and that kind of thing. And I, that's why I took off on this. Um, but they came up with uh, a number of things. Uh, and you hit on misinformation and disinformation. And of course, disinformation uh, is where it's intentional. They intentionally give you wrong facts and everything else. Um, and, you know, misinformation is just not facts gathered that are correct necessarily anybody's fault. And so I'll tell you what, I've begun to, after working on this for a while, and uh, the, the feedback has been tremendous on this. That, that's why I've continued it and, you know, I'll develop it into a book now um, because of the people, basically. And but the misinformation and disinformation to me are sort of up at the top of this list. I'm going to give you that the people uh, that I got from the people are because, gosh, uh, what can we believe on TV? Um, what can we believe in the newspaper when you read something? Did that really happen? Uh, is this guy that they're writing about, did he really do those things? He might not have done anything. But, you know, and then, of course, some of the foreign countries get into this. They hack in and they come up with, hey, this this guy is no good. Vote for Jim. You know, you don't want Frank. <laughs> I mean, Frank's done all these things. Actually, Frank hadn't done any of those things. <laughs> but so, and, of course, um, Russia is one of them that really is big time in it, and some of the other countries. So that was one of them. And just quickly, to save time, a political divide. People are very upset uh, that the Congress is, is you know, there's a division there, and that it's uh, red against blue. And I mean, that should never happen. And it never happened when I was young. I want to yeah. talk about that, Charles, because I... I feel the same way you do, and a lot of my friends who are roughly my age feel that way. And we lived 
in a better time. We lived in a time, um, uh, I'll, I'll even include uh, the time of Vietnam, uh, when, when people didn't have these problems, when uh, if you asked them to list what, what was bothering them, these things would not be on that list. Um, it was a better world, at least in the United States at that time. And now you and I are uh, at a time when we can look back down the road and we can make the comparison for the way it was when we were younger and look at what's happening today. And it is very troubling what's happening today. And so I, I assume you agree with that, but I wonder if you right. could tell me why all these things have popped up to make us so depressed, disappointed, and stressed. I think it's the quality of people in Congress. Um, now, there's some wonderful people in Congress, so I'm sure maybe if one or two congressmen are listening to this, I, I might not mean you, but we don't really have the statesmen or stateswomen anymore. Like, you know, we had, whether you liked them or not, we we had Stassen and, and we had uh, Humphrey. You know, I can remember, not to drag this out, but I can remember walking down Massachusetts Avenue and I looked in the window of this restaurant right against the glass was Humphrey and Stassen talking together, Democrat and Republican. And I'm sure they were talking about issues. But what's missing, you ask for that, is compromise, genuine compromise. It almost seems like if I'm a Democrat and I have a bill that I present, and it's really good. I mean, it's good for the country and everything else. But say, let's just say you're a Republican, you vote it down. You know what I mean? We didn't have that before in our day, to get to your point. We had a leveling of interest, and we would compromise. If I like your bill better than whatever the Democrats put up, I, I would vote for it, and vice versa. Now, uh, no do, no, no can do, you know? And that's very naive. It's very uh, unprofessional. And uh, ethics get into here, too. And we really didn't have that. We had some solid people there that if they were alive today, we wouldn't be where we are. You know, you <laughs> they, they wouldn't have some of these people elected uh uh, you know, they put it down, snuff it out uh, in their own way. Uh, but so they they kind of, the people in the in interviews and discussions that I've been faced with call it political divide. They don't like the political divide. It drives them crazy. And they, they think about it and they think that their vote doesn't count, Jay. I, I agree with them in the sense that, uh, you know, they're disturbed by all this, but, uh, and, and, I, and I appreciate the fact that you've done sort of a personal survey on it, but uh, what's the subset of people you're talking, you're talking to? Uh, are they in Arlington, Virginia? Are they in the East Coast, West Coast, in the South, in the North? Where, where do you make contact and ask people how they feel about these things? Well, this is a, wa a good question. This is Washington, D.C. metro area that I'm dealing with. But the group discussions are a very diverse group of various races, various career fields. So there's a good diversity there, which, of course, in any, it's not really a survey. It's more of group discussions. But the more the, the mix you have, the better it is. Otherwise, it's just stereotype, you know. And uh, so political divide, gun violence comes up, Jay, uh, top, up there on the top of the list. They're, they're really upset. Now, when I was in Vietnam as a U.S. Army Ranger, I mean, I carried AR-15 uh, and an M2 carbine. Finally, I got rid of them and used the AK-47, which is the... Chinese made weapon. And of course, there's a few reasons for that, but I don't want to get into any war stories, but it has a great accuracy and great knockdown punch. And also when that when you fire that, uh, they the enemy real can't real you know, doesn't realize that it's like from an American because of the sound. But 
AR-15 has a sound, M2 carbine, they know, oh, that's Americans, let's go get them. But when an AK-47 goes off, we don't need people having AK-47s in this country walking around and automatic weapons. So if I was president, one of the first things I'd do is I would ban assault weapons. You don't need an assault weapon to bring a deer down, you know. Uh, so we, we don't need that. And if you look at some of these crimes, like schools, which is very upsetting, you know, that your kids go into school and, and a little bit afraid to go to school. And even teachers, you know, that how, who do we know here might have a gun with them, you know, Jay? So we got, first step is we've got to get rid of uh, assault weapons. There's no need for them. Uh, maybe if you're a soldier in the infantry like I was, you needed one. Well, you sure did. We don't need it here. Got to calm things down and got to have terms for that. I don't mean to get off here, but... So you know, let me give you a, a couple of issue. reactions from what you've said so far. Number one, and we talk about this on Think Tech a lot, is that over the past few decades, we have learned not to care about each other. We have learned not to care about the country. Uh, you know, I grew up in the notion is the government is us and we are the government. It's right. all connected. And I was actually sad to see the draft terminated. I thought the draft was an important connection between the country and the military. But, yeah. hey, uh, they had their political reasons. The other reaction I want to mention to you is that if you say create your own world, and let's say, and I, I think this is pretty close on, that I agree with all the points you've made so far, and that means probably all the points you will make on what and what is you know, of concern here in this country now. Yeah. Um, and so you say create your own world, but the problem is, and COVID has certainly influenced this, is that we are more isolated uh, than we have really been in our lifetimes from others. Um, and I appreciate you coming on the show and talking about it. I appreciate having this conversation with you, but the reality is a lot of us don't have this conversation um, and do not connect up with other people, and we are in silos and personal silos. So when you talk about create your own world, I hope, Charles, that you're not talking about maintaining a silo. I hope you're talking about connecting. Yeah, I'm talking about connecting uh, also, and I'm glad you brought up that point because I was going to bring it up later. I don't mean that in create your, well, we can, do we want to skip some of these other things that bothers the people and go to, to what you, what I'm talking about, create your own world? No, uh, let's hear the rest of them and then we'll talk okay, about I'll just, create I'll your just, own world. I'll whip down and then I'll go to, then because of these problems that are causing you, the people, to not sleep at night and get depressed and not be happy. See, 19% of these people in the country, our country, are unhappy. Okay, that, you know, they're unhappy people. And it's actually greater than that because 77% uh, of women fake being happy. And let's see, how what percentage of, 86%, uh, excuse me, of women fake being happy, 77% of men fake it. So you got 19% unhappy in this country, and then others just maybe saying, yes, I'm happy, but I'm really not. But I have to tell you I'm happy. So it's a kind of a fake thing. Problem is, and the reason to create your own world, is you want to be happy, Jay. I mean, we want to be happy in this world, no matter what we're doing. And I don't mean that you, uh, develop a cocoon like you're leading to uh, and forget the main uh, mainstay, mainstream. I'm not saying you go over here, create your own world, and forget about the mainstream America. Uh, I, uh, well, let, let's run down some of these other things that bother the people and then what led me to create your own world. And then I'll tell you suggestions to create your own world and be happy. And so you're, 
wife or spouse or friends are happy because you're happy. People are only happy if they get with you and they see you're happy. It spills off on them. And we need that more the spilling effect of our self-confidence, which it gives you. When you're happy, you're self-confident. And when you're happy, you have more faith in yourself. And that leads to hope, which we all need today. We need to believe in hope. Okay, we talked about gun violence, racism, cyber attacks. Um, one comment that I'm, I have to make there, because each one of these is going to be a chapter. You know, each one of these topics we're talking about now are going to be a, a chapter. But what we need to do in cyber, by the way, cyber attack can shut us down. Um, you've seen some movies that uh, like M, uh, M I six. Oh no, M I five. Did you see that TV series? No. Check it out. That that's what can really happen. There's a lot of truth in that one. Uh, so we're you know we're shut down. You go to the grocery store and they have to do everything manually at the checkout counter, etc. But what we need to do, Jay, just like we got to get rid of assault guns, it's basic. It's 101 again. Uh, we need to build a firewall that's invincible in this country so that we're not shut down because they're getting so good. And you know, I'm not talking about spam. And, um, hackers getting in there, but it's getting worse. Uh, artificial intelligence, which is another topic they came up with. Uh, <clears throat> immigration control, drug, human trafficking, healthcare, economy, COVID pandemic, um, foreign relations, uh, crimes uh, local that bothers them. There's so many local crimes, poor customer service, and here's a good one that um, I'll never forget this guy in the audience. He said, I worry about unsustainability um, using up resources. We are, you know, we're, uh, see, what is it? We're 34 trillion in debt, this country is. Did you know that? I mean, I a lot of that's Ukraine and that's some of these other things which uh, I remember a person mentioning in the uh, discussion group, she was worried that uh, where our money goes, that you know, you hear about $3 billion missing somewhere, and it was supposed to go to X, but it didn't go to X country for whatever. Uh, and then uh, Gaza and the Ukraine war, that, that's the uh, bother. Okay, that, this is the complex world, Jay. When you meet with these people, Charles, what's the good news? Do they ever okay. stand up at these meetings and say, you know, I'm really happy about this phenomenon or this series of events, or is it all just uh, I'm unhappy and I have a gripe about all these things? On this sheet, it says uh, at the end, I give them time. Please list several things that upset you, uh, causing anxiety, possible depression, or stress. Then list things that make you happy. Um, and so then they fill this out. And uh, it's interesting. <clears throat> but um, the creating your own world, and I, I have to make it really clear because sometimes people don't understand it. I don't mean what, like you were alluding to before, which was a good question, what I was talking about not getting in a cocoon and forgetting about everything else. What I'm saying is do what you love to do and that you have a passion for, because life is short, Jay. We've got to be happy. I mean, if we're not happy, I don't know what we're doing then. So some of the things that you know, we've come up with the things that you're passionate about and you love, that's what you need to be doing. When you're not doing your main job, if you're retired, then you can do this 100% of the time. Reading, um, 
nature, uh, gardening, travel, uh, church, uh, eating out, the restaurant, uh, family, and friends, pets. Like I've got two Yorkshire Terriers, and I mean they're they're a big part of my life. You know, they keep you happy. Uh, music. Whatever your favorite music is, hiking, writing, which I love to do. Uh, see what else have we got here? Okay, hobbies, reading, um, and then you know any games, Sudoku, crossword puzzles, uh, those kind of things. So, I guess what we're talking about there is that. You create your own world in the things that you love the most and spend your time there when you're not doing the mainstream. Uh, I don't but, but Charles, let me let me uh, let me push back on that. Yeah. You have identified and your groups have identified a, a, a significant list of troubles here, some of which are uh, going to get us. They're going to affect us. They're going to you know, destroy our uh, civil society uh, if we don't watch out. Um, and of course, um, you know, it's it's up to everyone to do his or her part uh, to try to prevent that kind of destruction. But um, when you say uh, create your own world, when you say uh, do what you love to do and be happy, um, it sounds to me like you're saying ignore these existential threats all around you. Uh, don't participate in the in the uh, correction of these problems. Uh, don't participate in the in the in the discourse uh, which calls these problems out and tries to correct them. Um, where where does that come? You know, we start out with the premise of all these problems that people worry about, um, but your solution doesn't include dealing with them. Explain. No, no, Steve. That's that's good point. That, that's exactly what I'm saying, that if you are worried about, I mean, we have an energy problem. So if you want to get with an energy group or consult with them or do volunteer work, do that because that makes you happy because you want the energy. That's your big thing, let's say. Sure, go ahead and do that. that that's part of your creating your own world. That's part of it. I don't mean that you get away from mainstream. I mean, uh, but I'm talking about things like don't let these things keep cracking your mind. You know, when I get into my car now, um, there's only music on, Jay. There's not, this is seven on your side. Here's the world news breaking anymore. I, I don't get the Washington Post anymore. And as a kid around here, I used to deliver 750 Washington Post every morning because I, I, I don't want to see all that stuff, you know. So it, it takes self-discipline. But, boy, you feel real good uh, about it. But <clears throat> if, I'm, uh, if I want to be a member of uh, an organization that's out to help uh, wildlife save the elephants or something, I might give to that cause, just make use taking that one out of the blue, and then I might have an elephant sticker on my car. I'm, I don't, but I'm just using that one, uh, and and that makes you happy though, because I'm saving elephants, I'm saving animals, <clears throat> I'm helping at the pet uh, refuge place where the you know these dogs need care. Uh, so it doesn't mean you get out from the mainstream of life. I mean, <clears throat> even though I get a summary every morning, five paragraphs of the main things going on, uh, you know, worldly that I need to know about, or whether it's political or military or whatever. And when I take uh, the world quiz of 10 questions at the on Friday, the end of the week, I usually get eight, nine, or ten out of ten, and so it does. So I'm in my own world. I've created the world. My wife was talking about it this morning that she really likes that because she even said, 
you know, I'm supposed to go to this function and I don't, I don't want to go. I said, well, don't go. She said, okay, I'm doing your create your own world then. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, you, you know, you gotta be happy, Jay. And, and so if you are happy to do the thing as you just said, cause you, yeah, that's a great point where, and I have to keep reminding people, I don't mean you turn your back on everything and that, I got my little world, gardening, my pet, because, you know, the things you really love to do, Maja, with a, some of the women play here, they got five women, they get together three times a week, fine, that's great, that's part of it, because they're happy when they're doing that. Well, let me, let me uh, sort of <clears throat> connect some of the dots. Um, you talked about the media, and it's hard to avoid misinformation and disinformation. Um, you know, not only in the U.S., but around the world, and it's hard to know what's true. Uh, and here we are in, in the middle of uh, what's going to be a 10-month uh, election cycle with campaign uh, campaign candidates uh, trying to influence us, get them to send, get us to send money, get us to vote for them, and so forth. And it's cacophony, I'm sure you will agree. It's cacophony, and it's very disturbing. Um, and you, um, you you really hate it in many ways. I'm sure that if you talk to your constituents out there, they would say, I really hate it. I don't want to be part of that. I yeah. wish it would go away already. We spend much too much time on it. But the reality is we we have an obligation to vote. We have the right to vote. It's It's threatened in some places, in some ways. But we really have to do that to preserve the democracy. So what, you know, the elephant in the room here is uh, Trump versus Biden. And uh, they're on, you know, two sides of a divide, for sure. And uh, we all have, I mean, really all of us have strong feelings, except maybe some of the independents. Um, but how do you deal with that when you are building your own world? Are you, are you turning that off? Are you listening to them? Uh, are you listening to the media that reports about them? Are you making your mind up as a literate, informed citizen? Are you voting, uh, you know, to, to exercise your right and your obligation? How does all of this fit in an election cycle, which is more troubling than any I can remember in my lifetime? Well, you have to, you have to, uh, like I said, you know, turn that TV off. Uh, people are struggling for sleep these days. You know, that's a big thing now. And the reason is, is they watch the news. You shouldn't watch news after 8 o'clock at night. And, you know, I don't watch the news anymore on TV. I used to. I was on it all the time, getting in my car, the news. No more of that. But, you know, because and I'm happy. I, I, you, you can't be happy if, uh, and here's my big point in my amazing Fireside Talks book, which gets to a lot of this. Two, if you can't make an impact on something, it's a waste of your energy to spend time on it. So why should I hear these people yapping about how people feel about Trump or Biden and all that kind of stuff? I, I think it's a waste of your time because it's on your mind and it's driving you nuts. Don't let it drive you nuts. Just turn it all off. <clears throat> and like I said, it takes self-discipline to do that. Because like a lot of people, Jay, I used to walk in my car, boom, the news was right on. You know. Also, it's a little distracting when you're driving as opposed to I, in my car. When you get in there, it's escape, spa, or the 50s music. One of those three, and that's it. Well, you know, but you know, ultimately, you you do want to go into the um, uh, the polling place and stand in the election, sure. you know, and and pull the right uh, levers, you and three hundred and forty million others, and uh, you want to do the right thing because uh, arguably, um, if one of these candidates gets into office, he's going to be an old-fashioned dictator and make our lives miserable and destroy our constitution, uh, and the other one. Not the other one will try to do the right thing, and and so the the, um, the the effect of that election is huge on all of us. 
And I'm, I'm not sure that we can fully appreciate it. I mean, I can, and you can. I won't ask you your persuasion, but um, I, I, I think a lot of people need to be fully informed, and they are not fully informed. And you if you let them, if you let them go into that booth without being fully informed, we're all asking for trouble. Yeah, I'm with you 100 percent there. And when you say fully informed, it, it, it is some of that information misinformation or disinformation too. That's one of the problems. But you and I really talk straight, and we talk turkey to each other. So I wasn't going to get into this, but you know, Colin Powell was my ranger buddy and. Uh, the army and so we've known each other a long time and so uh i try not to have trump on my mind i'm i'm kind of down the middle you know my wife always says you know whether it's a local vote or national vote uh state vote who should we vote for and i said just vote for the best of the worst you know and you know we uh but Colin Powell told me, I said, what do you think of Trump? And I, I usually never ask questions like that because I try to get out of the political part. And he said, he's a liar. That's all he said. So you got to ask yourself whether you're Republican or Democrat, you got to forget that and think of the country and all the people that died in this country for freedom and democracy. All those people died. Civil War, the First World War, Second World War, Vietnam, Korea, all those other going all the way back in the history of this country, they're six feet under. They, they fought for freedom and democracy. I don't know if you want to have an authoritarian type of government and not have a democracy anymore. And that's what you get on the one side. And on the other side, you're safe. Anyway, do you really want allies to leave us because of who the new president is and wind up in the splendid isolation like Great Britain found themselves years ago? We'll be isolated. And, you know, usually that leads to self-destruction. And, you know, I can give you many, you know, Doing that book on blunders that we talked about last time, I can give you a lot of examples. You can probably give me more of uh, countries that went under because of the despot, you know. Well, to, you know, try to, to try to bring it together, because we don't have much time left, uh, is it seems to me, I would go back to my earlier comment about caring. Uh, I think the people uh, have to care. And uh, part of you no know, part of happiness, part of love, is caring. Um, so if I if I'm uh, if I'm caring, not only about my neighbor, my family, a guy down the block, uh, human beings in general, um, Americans, Americans, and I use that term in the fullest possible sense, in the sense of uh, World War One, World War Two. Um, uh, Korea, Vietnam, Normandy, Normandy, the cemetery, and, you know, all your experience in a, a career in the army. And I was in the service too, so I, yeah. I understand that. Um, you've got to care about everybody. Not sure you're going to disagree, but you're going to disagree in a civilized fashion. Um, but you're going to care about the entity, the country, the people, the principles and all that. And I think, uh, I don't want to tell you what to put in your book, Charles. I just wrote it down, caring. <laughs> you, just, you just gave me a good lead. <laughs> but if I care it. about people and I feel they care about me, I'm yeah. in a better place and I'm much happier. Yeah. <laughs> well, treat others the way you want to be treated yourself. Wasn't that like, there's the no Bible? excuse. That's in the Bible. Books. When you come right down to it, there's no excuse for the Ukraine-Russia war. No excuse for that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think maybe uh, our diplomats were, maybe we exhausted our diplomacy power, but uh, I, sleeping at the switch or something, but we needed to keep that from happening. I mean, that 
what is, what is Russia doing? They're bombing buildings. They're not bombing military targets. They're destroying the infrastructure. The women, grandmothers, babies. I mean, my gosh. It's, uh, there should be, when that thing is over, uh, something like the Nuremberg trials, because they're war criminals, you know. And, well, uh, it's, you some, it's something you said a little Geneva. while ago. Pardon? It's like if you have the right state of mind and people see that, um, you're um, a moral, ethical leader. You're a leader in happiness. You're a yep. leader in caring. Caring. And, and so I think it's, uh, it's infectious what you're talking about. And I think that if the United States wants to be the city on the hill and be the beacon for the world as it was after World War II, um, then we have to set a standard, set a set a model, set an example. And that would be caring, because caring and happiness are all the same. Yeah. And if you showed the people of Russia, for example, uh, that it's better to care about their, you know, their 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 fellow citizen, it's better to care about their neighbors and the world. Um, maybe they'll change, but we have to set the example. Yeah. Uh, we only well, have a minute left, Charles, and I want to yeah. offer you the opportunity to summarize this <laughs> and uh, you know give whatever wisdom you want to our viewers. Well, I took some notes there on your caring, so maybe this needs to be changed to create your own caring world. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I guess the bottom line of this whole thing is, the general picture is, that the world's unstable. Certainly, unfortunately, our country's unstable, but it's very complex, but you can't let it worry you. You, you know, you, you, you've got to put that over here and have your world, but keep a tab on it. It's like you were saying, don't create a, uh, you know, create your own caring world I hope you let me use that now. Of course. I'm going to use caring throughout this book now. That, well, I, like I always that feel word. it. Our yeah, best hit, shows. You, you I hit a homer. <laughs> That's a home run. <laughs> so, I always feel anyway, it. Our best anyway, shows. the bottom line comes out of the amazing Fireside Talks book, which was two books ago. <laughs> and that was the self-help book. And in there, again, just, just as a repeat, but don't, don't, Spend your time and worry about things that you cannot impact or it's a waste of your energy. It really is. Uh, people let things just, I, I see them where they're almost shaking about this political scene, whether they're one side or the other. Absolutely. We need to vote. And, uh, you know, people have fought for us to be able to vote today. You know, they died. You know, yeah. fighting for freedom lives. and democracy. Yeah. And Charles, know. we've got to go. We're out of time. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Charles Toftoy, a man with uh, uh, three careers behind him, a man who uh, uh, really appreciates and just, and talks with uh, the community and uh, who is spending his time uh, doing what he loves to do, writing, thinking, reading, and appearing on Think Tank. Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you, Jay. I, I salute you for all you do. I salute you back. <laughs> Charles, Bye -bye. talk to Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs>